Thank you for joining this uh, Design for Governance video series. Uh, we have covered uh, understanding of the governance and the design consideration for management group, also what it is, and the hierarchical structure. In the next video, we are going to understand the design for resource group, resource tags, and Azure policies. So let's start one by one understanding what these are and what are the consideration that we need to keep in mind and or related information that we could gather, not in deep dive like a portal thing, but from the architecture perspective. All right, so design for resource group. This is what it is, design for resource group. So very first thing is what is resource group that we have already explained many times, but this is the uh, framework that I'm using for all of my videos now. First, understand what it is, why we need, what it can do for us, what are the benefits, and then go and use it. <coughs> all right, so resource groups are uh, logical containers into which Azure resources are deployed and managed. And uh, let's try, because we know whenever we create any resource in the, in the Azure, the very first thing we need to select the resource group, which is not bounded to the region. Uh, you can have multiple resources belonging to different regions inside the same resource group. This is just a logical container. Now, resource groups have their own location because when, whenever we create something, we also create resource group in some location. But the, but the resources inside the resource group are not bound to the location, okay? And whenever you see resource groups region is temporarily unavailable, you can't update resources in that resource group. Well, because metadata is unavailable. Resource group is just holding the metadata. That's the reason you can have your resources in different region as well. Now, resources can be moved between the resource groups. That's possible and you can do that through the portal. Uh, resource group can't be nested. You cannot have resource group inside the resource group. And each resource must be in one and only one resource group. Uh, what else? Uh, I think this is this is more than enough to understand uh, what resource group is, what are the features, right? For resource group. So there are a couple of things we need to keep in mind, or we can as per the organizational priorities, but there are different ways different things that we can consider and apply, which is which make more sense to our organization. So we, <clears throat> we can group because we are grouping the resource inside the resource group. That's why I'm calling it group. Group by type, as you can see, group by is most appropriate for on-demand services that aren't associated with an app. Example, SQL databases. You can, you can have all the SQL in one resource group or all the web services in one resource group. You can group by app, like app, XYZ app in one resource group, like all the resources related to that particular application, like your app services, your VM, your story account, or your SQL database, your Redis cache, your, your messaging queue, Anything related to that particular application, you can uh, group by. Then you can group by location, like region. You can group by billing, like cost center. Uh, but don't restrict your thinking to one strategy of a combination of different strategies is the best. 
And you can easily, uh, for example, let's put it this way, you can have all those management thing in, in one resource group, like your virtual network, uh, your, your thing like passion server, all those management stuff you can place in one resource group. Or you can think like, do you want to deploy, update, and delete resources at the same time? If so, you may want to place all those resources in one resource group. You can utilize this feature during doing the testing or testing purpose when you're creating multiple things for your POC, for your testing. It's better to place in, in single resource group so that you can get rid of those once you're done with your uh, development, your testing lifecycle. Uh, administration overhead. How many resource groups would you like to manage? Do you have a centralized or decentralized Azure administrators? Accordingly, you can have those resource group and apply the RBAC, right? Then do you need to ensure your resource group metadata is stored in a particular region? Compliance requirement. You think about the compliance requirement. Well, these are the few considerations that you need to keep in mind while thinking for uh, or while designing your resource groups. I hope this would be this would be helpful. Now let's try to uh, understand the resource tags. So, as 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 usual, what is resource tag? Try to understand what are the benefits. How can we use it? So resource tag are another way to organize resources. Tags provide extra information or metadata on your resources. It's nothing, it's just a key value pair that you can assign to your resource as a metadata. It is a metadata. It will help you uh, filter your resources. It will help you finding the cost filtration. It will help you to filter and identify different resources belongs to different uh, environment or owners or cost center. But it is not like you can assign only one tag to your uh, resource. You can have multiple tags to your resource. And accordingly, accordingly, the filtration will work. For example, for a single resource, you have multiple tags. For example, location or environmental and cost model. Now, if you're filtering the cost model, tax will find all those cost models. It doesn't matter how many tax are applied on that particular resource. You can apply tax to a resource group. However, the resources in the resource group don't inherit those tax by default. This is, this is something very interesting because RBAC inherited, policies inherit and tag doesn't. And all these are the tools of governance, right? So remember tag doesn't inherit. Now let's see a few considerations before creating our tax uh, design. So we need to think of the, uh, we need to consider organization taxonomy. Has your organization already defined terms for compliance or cost reporting? Aligning tags with accepted department nominal culture will make it easy to understand. Maybe because you do have such kind of features in the on-premises or you guys are already following something like that. Generally, you can choose IT aligned tagging or business aligned tagging. A combination of the two approaches can be very effective. Now, if you're wondering what these are, let me try to explain a little bit. IT aligned tagging is more about uh, workload, application, function, or environment criteria. Uh, however, business goes with uh, accounting, business ownership, cost responsibility, or business criticality, those things. You can apply both the strategy. <clears throat> then uh, what do we have? We need to, uh, usually uh, we should, we can have both like simple and complex. We can have both simple and uh, complex uh, tagging design or tagging strategy, right? But usually it is good to start with uh, 
few tags and then scale out. You need to think uh, what all tags are required for your organization. Do not just keep adding tags because it will increase your admin uh, overhead, right? Just find out what are the actual need requirement and only apply those tags which are relevant. You can also use Azure policies uh, to make sure the tags are there. Policy is a wonderful tool to, to make your resource compliant for tag or do not let the people create resource if it's not tagged or just fix it. <laughs> yeah, policy can do that too. Now, let's try to check uh, the types of uh, tags. They are usually uh, five categories, functional, classification, accounting, partnership, and purpose. Let's see the different examples to understand it better. Functional are like application XYZ or tier, web tier or database tier, web server, Apache or environment, dev, prod, things like that, functional. Classification could be like confidential or, or confidential is your key and it could be private, public or it's, uh, what's the word, neutral? <laughs> SLA, like 24 hours or like 99.9%, .9%, things like that. Accounting holds the department, finance, HR, or, or program like business initiative, things like that. Partnership is like, who is the owner? Uh, who are the stakeholders? Purpose is like uh, business impact, moderate or business process support or revenue impact is high, the purpose of those uh, resources, you can have those kind of tax as well. So you can categorize generally in five ways, functional classification, accounting, partnership purpose. These are the ways you can think for the strategy for your tagging or designing for your tagging. Now let's try to explore the Azure policies. So Azure Policy is a service in Azure that enables you to create, assign, and manage policies that control or audit your resources. As we were uh, talking about the resource tax, we can apply the policies, uh, which can make sure resource would not be created if the proper tax are not assigned, or which can make it, it non-compliant and you can do it manually, or it can simply go ahead and fix it. So Azure policy let you define both individual policies and groups of related policies, we call them initiative. And you'll find so many in the portal inbuilt. Azure policies are inherited down the hierarchy, as I said, but tax are not. And Azure policy evaluates your resources and highlight resources that aren't compliant with the policy that you've created. And you can prevent non-compliant resources from being created as well, as I said, regarding the resource tag. So that's what the policy is, as the name says, policy, right? <laughs> now let's check a few considerations. So Azure policy compliance dashboard provides an aggregated view to help evaluate the overall state of the environment. And it has those uh, wonderful features that you can drill down to a uh, per resource or per po policy level granularity through the portal. And you need to take care of, or you need to think or keep in mind about the schedule because Azure policy evaluates resources at a specific time and it's important to understand when an evolution is triggered. That's how the compliance is uh, calculated, right? Then organization will vary in how they respond to non-compliant resources. Your strategy may be different depending on the resources. For example, I was saying resource tag, you can deny, you can make it non-compliant, you can fix it, like deny a change or log changes or alter a resource those kind of things you can do through, through policies. Now, 
In some cases, Azure policy can automatically remediate non-compliant resources and tagging is the best example that I've mentioned a couple of times. Uh, just wanted to emphasize because tagging is the best example to remediate. And you have to put in the conditions because this is a JSON template. As per the conditions, it will, it will uh, do the necessary steps, which you mentioned. Now, <clears throat> just wanted to differentiate between policy and RBA because these two are the different things. That both are the tools for the governance. So it's important not to confuse Azure policy and Azure RBAC. We use policy to ensure that the resource state is compliant to, to our organization. Compliance doesn't depend on who made the change or who has permission to make changes. You see, the permissions is all about our back. Sticking to the uh, rules and regulations is all about compliance. So Azure policy will evaluate the state of a resource and act to ensure the resource stays compliant. Doesn't matter who has the access. If policy is applied, you can't do anything. If actions need to be controlled, then of course, use Azure RBAC. If an individual has access to complete an action, but the result is non-compliant resource, Azure policy still blocks the action. I hope this make uh, a difference clear between the policy and RBAC. As I said, both are the tools for the governance, but RBAC is, is more about assigning the permissions to the users. But even if a user has the permission, but policy is applied, then they can't do anything. For example, user has the permission to create the virtual machine, but the policy is applied. You cannot create the, some XYZ of some uh, SKU, particular SKU, DS11, V2, or V5, then of course, even if you have the permission, like you are some contributor, but you cannot create because policy applied. I hope these uh, things uh, will help. So in the design for governance, we have covered uh, understanding of the governance, then designing the management group, then designing resource tag policy and resource group things that we need to keep in mind, things that we need to talk to the customer while gathering the information regarding the architecture, uh, designing the architecture. So in upcoming session, we'll still talk about a few more things in governance, then we'll jump into uh, authentication and monitoring. That's the uh, very first skill under this labels, measured skill. So till then, take care, bye-bye.